Hello, it's me, Claire. Um, today we are on chapter 17 of Bubble. Um, the last time we saw Joe, he was messaging um, Beth quite a bit. Beth was feeling sad because she saw his interview and saw that he was crying when he talked about her leaving, but he assured her that he was okay. Um, and he kind of was regretting that Graham asked him questions about Beth because he didn't want her to feel bad. So now let's see what happens in chapter 17. 11 years, 3 months, and 9 days. There's a line 20 people long at reception. Julie has been busy taking pre presents all morning. They've stacked up high against the wall behind her desk. I can't see what they are, but if it's the same as last year, they'll be mostly teddies, dolls, and remote control cars. Some of them are old toys that people don't want anymore, but some are newly wrapped with labels with kids' names written on them. They cut most of them off, and I don't mind. It's not fair that just those of us who get the TV get to have everything. And my room isn't big enough for all of them anyway. But I would like to get that FIFA 15 game that man, that a man and his little boy brought in an hour ago. The line grows even longer after midday as people take their lunch hours and go to the shops and bring more presents for us. Then after 2 o'clock, the reception area is quiet again and the pile goes down as Keith takes them down to the corridor and locks them in a room. I switch cameras and watch the workmen for about an hour until I spot Amir walking along the sidewalk with his backpack. He nods to Keith, then he's at reception area. He turns, glances up at the camera, and gives me a thumbs up. He's so silly. It usually takes him 22 minutes to get to my room from the reception area, but today nearly two hours have gone before I hear him in the transition zone. He smiles as he walks into my room. You okay? he asks. Yes, I'm okay. Where have you been? Sorry, things were a bit busy. With the others? Amir nods his head quickly. Yes, but I was looking for this too. He holds up his hand and shows me a tiny square chip between his finger and thumb. What is it? He grins. My brother got us a decoder upgrade. Quantox 635i with Trimedia Processor, he says. It scans through all the networks at the same time, every country, every city, every satellite, and cable. But I don't watch all the ones I've got. You can't have enough, he says. Everyone wants more channels, and you can't have too many channels. The world is so big, you might miss something somewhere. He kneels down by the receiver. I get out of my bed and kneel beside him. Amir, where does all of this come from? It must cost money. He takes the cover of the receiver. No, it's for free. My brother gets it from the backs of trucks. It's stolen? No, we just borrow. Amir grins as he clicks the new part into place. There, he says. Now all we've got to do is find the channel. Which one? The one your friend will be on. Henry? Who else? No point in sending a man to the moon if no one's going to be on TV to watch him. I smile. Henry isn't going to be on the moon, but I know what Amir means. I wouldn't be the same if Henry had just told me what... It was like to walk around the mall. He'd leave things out and he'd thought were important, and he might make things up that didn't, which he does sometimes when he's excited. It would be much better to see him. I stand up. Amir points the remote at the TV as we walk backward toward my bed. The monitors flicker, but all we see are fuzzy pictures and all we hear is white noise. Amir looks confused. It's not on Galaxy, he says, but it must be on here somewhere. The channels change again. Cars are racing, a girl on a motorbike, camels walking across the desert. Amir taps the remote against the side of his head. I call him, he whispers. Henry? No, my brother. He takes his phone out of his pocket and walks up over to the window. As he presses the keys, I try more channels, but all I find are sim silly commercials about cornflakes and detergent. Amir holds his finger in the air. I stop scanning. Rashid, we can't find it. Amir listens, then he st starts talking faster. K, K. He turns off the phone. What did he say? He walks over and takes the remote from me. My fault, he says. We on Astro when we should be on Echo Star. He glances at his watch. But we haven't gotten time now. We've only got two days. Until the aliens come? No, he says, until you go outside. What? Am I really going? My breath starts coming out in a little quick burst and my heart rate speeds up. Outside? Am I really going? Of course. It's short notice, but it's only a day my brother can lend us his car. We've only got two days, but he hasn't told me anything. Henry had planned ma mapped out for three months. He's been on a special diet and been out for trial runs. All we've got to do is watch TV on my bed. What's wrong? Are you nervous? It's okay. Everyone gets nerves, even him. He nods at Theo Walcott. I bite my lip. Come on, says Amir. What is it? I'm a bit scared. I don't know what I'll be wearing or where I'm going. Amir leans toward me. Don't worry, he taps the side of his head. It's all up here. I know everything. But I need to know, too. Amir looks at his watch and back at the door. Yes, of course you do. Sorry. Quick pass me that. I reach over at the table and hand my laptop. Amir looks angry suddenly. What's this? He reads the post about me 
about me being in KFC. That garbage, he says. I know. Amir types. Your dad is wrong. It wasn't KFC. It was Burger King. He presses send and then grins at me. So, he says, I'll tell you where we're going to do. He opens a blink document, then starts to blink quickly like there's something in his eye. Are you okay? Of course. I just thinking. He blinks again and starts to type. This is a checklist, he says. Things you have to do. Things I have to do. Don't save the document. Just remember what I type and then delete. I look at the screen and try to follow what he's writing. But his fingers move so quickly and the page scrolls up before I can read. There. He turns the screen towards me. EDT. 3.06 a.m. Compressed air. 19.5%. Oxygen. 80.5%. Nitrogen. Volume 1 liter. Air flow 3 cubic feet per minute. Duration 2 hours and 52 minutes. 26 seconds. ETA. 6.58 a.m. Ha, he says. Did I tell you I used to work on the trains? So this is all we need? Amir nods quickly. Yes. I worked it all out. I give you extra 26 seconds of air in case we get stuck on the elevator. I read the rest of the list. Some of them... Some of them make sense. Some of the numbers and words I don't understand. There are things on it like cubic capacity, internal external temperature variable, light pollution, and density of traffic. Amir then opens his email account. And here, I do this at home. He shows me a picture of a person with my name above it. It's head. Height, 150 centimeters. Weight, 54 kg. Body mass, 12.2. Lung capacity, 4.5 liters. Resting breath, 23 per minute. 100% increase for PA. I look up. Amir grins at me. Some I got from your record, the rest from WikiHow. I scratch my head. Amir laughs. I joke. Trust me, I consult the best doctors. I don't need to ask anyone here, but I know some of the top people in India. Oh, I nearly forgot. 7-Eleven. He takes a deep breath. What's 7-Eleven? Amir lets his breath go. Increases lung capacity, he says, and, in, and keep you calm, too. Breath in for 7 seconds, out for 11. Try it, like this. I watch him breathe in for as long as he does, then let my breath out. Good, he says. And again, doesn't it make you feel good? No, it makes me feel sick. Amir laughs a lot. Me too. But it goes after a while. Practice tonight. I tell him I will, and then I read the list again. There are so many numbers. He's done so much research, and I don't know whether to trust him or not. This is a really, really important thing. If he'd install the TVs wrong, all that would happen was the channels would have been mixed up, or maybe they wouldn't have switched it on. If he's got this wrong, I could go outside and die. Amir's paper, pager beeps. I've got to go, he says. Keep watching the screens, especially Jim. But he doesn't do anything. You know, find him and Phil funny? They like them. Chuckle Brothers or Ant and Deck. Maybe you take notes, Joe. They're so funny, you gotta watch them all night. Why? I like to know what happens when I'm not here. Have you got any messages on here from people? He turns my laptops around so I can answer. BBC Bubble Boy Forum, Thursday, August 26th. 12, 17 p.m. Dear Bubble Boy, you were so cute when you were eight. What happened? Stephen H. Bristol. Amir Tuts. Some people, he says. They no understand. He grew up and so should you. Brilliant, I laugh. Amir's pager beeps, beeps again. Must go, he says. Somebody else needs me. I might see you later, but I'm not in tomorrow. But Amir, I look back at my screen. Yes? Why are we going out at night? It's too risky during the day, and this way you see what aliens come here for. What's that? The greatest show on Earth. What's... Amir grins and slides out the door. I turn the screens off and lie back on my head. I really am going outside. I really am. I really, really am. I pick up my phone. I want to tell Beth. I want to ask her what she thinks if I'm being stu stupid, believing that it could really happen, or even for going at all. But I can't tell her. She's already worried about being so far away from me. I don't want to risk telling her another thing. I know she would think it's too risky, and I can't tell Greg because he would think that too. I want to go outside, even if it might be dangerous. No one can understand how much. Only Henry, Henry knows what it feels like to be stuck in a bubble. But my legs start to twitch and my chest feels tight. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. I get up and walk around my room. My laptop beeps again. A new message. BBC Bubble Forum, Thursday, August 26, 308 p.m. Dear Bubble Boy, I saw you on TV last night, and you were watching Source Code. It's one of my favorite films. I think I think Jake Gyllenhaal was great in it. He was brilliant in Danny Darko, or Donnie Darko. Have you seen that? Anyway, when you were talking to the interviewer, he asked you what you would like to do if you had eight minutes to live, and you said you would look out the window. I thought that was a bit sad, but ever since, I've been thinking about what I would do with eight minutes. At first, I thought I would like to do an exciting thing, like go to Disneyland, Paris, or climb Mount Everest. Or maybe I would like to go to New York. But then I realized that eight minutes isn't very long, and I would, freeze in, I would freeze in time before I got anywhere. So in the end, I thought I would just stay at home and watch TV with my mom and dad. 
I hope you get better soon. You can write me back if you'd like. Dan Essex. I walk over to the window. The workmen are digging the trench. The people in the offices are staring at their computer screens and the planes are flying over the building. If I really only had eight minutes, what would I do? I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do go anywhere. I might make it through the transition zone and then the corridors and the elevators. I might be able to make it to the reception, but by the time I got there, it would be time to go back. But now I've got more than eight minutes. Amir said I've got nearly three hours. Three whole hours outside. I walk back down to my laptop and open a new tab. What can I do in London in three hours? 323 million results. I can buy a tourist card and get on a bus. I can visit Buckingham Palace, the Houses of Parliament, and the Tower of London. The line isn't too long. I can go to Madame Tussin's and I walk into the Hyde Park. I get onto the barge and float down the, th the Thames. I can have tea at the Ritz. I can see a play. I can do nearly 70 million things, but they'll all be closed or it'll be too dark to see anything at 4 a.m. Amir, what are we going to do when we have to get up so early? My chest cramps again. I'm not really sure I want to go. What if I die? Deep breaths. I won't be able to go anywhere if I can't breathe. I lay down beside my laptop and look at the question again. Dan hasn't got three hours. He's only got eight minutes. I close my eyes, think for a moment, and open it again. Dear Dan, I haven't seen Donnie Darko, but I would but I do love source code. I'd love to do all the things you said you'd like to do, but if I only had eight minutes, I think I would stay home too. I turn my laptop off and look at the screens. Nothing much seems to be happening. I'm watching the same thing over and over again. It's like when the robbers override the security system and play the film on the CCTV while they steal money from a bank. I yawn and think of trying to find some football to watch, but Amir told me to make notes. I make them on my laptop. 4.10 p.m. Man arrives at the repair photocopier. 5.05 p.m. Messenger delivers blood. 5.30 p.m. Julie says goodbye to Keith and walks down the road. 6.22 p.m. Keith is on the phone. 7.55 p.m. Jim arrives. 8 p.m. Julie meets Keith outside. They kiss in the service alley. 8.30 p.m. Jim takes his book to the toilet. 8.46 p.m. Jim comes out of the toilet. 9.15 p.m. Phil checks the first floor. 10 p.m. Jim goes to the toilet again. I close my laptop. This is so boring. How can Amir say I should watch them all night? I don't think the Chuckle Brothers are very funny, but they're funnier than this. Ant and, Dar Ant and Deck definitely are. I looked them up. So, that is the end of Chapter 17. It's kind of an exciting spot to leave off since um, Joe might be able to go outside soon. So, I'm curious to know if Amir is maybe a little bit crazy and he shouldn't be taking him, or if he's really just trying to help Joe out. So, um, I'm excited to read Chapter 18.